Well, hi there, boys and girls. They were going to learn how to do integration where the chain rule was invoked whenever the person took the derivative of the function. And so we're going to learn the chain rule in reverse. And I'm going to give you another formula that I'm, we're going to write down. And I'm going to use and introduce a dummy variable called u. And u can substitute for anything. So we're going to have the integral of u to the n du. And the du is going to be very important. This must be here. If you have this integral, your answer is, your answer is going to be u to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 plus c. So if you can get an integral in this form, this will be your answer. So let's take a look at this problem. I've got the integral of x squared plus 1 to the fifth power times 2x dx. And we really don't want to multiply this all out. We could actually expand this, but that would be a pain. We do not want to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to notice that there is a something here that is being raised to a power. And so I'm going to let that equal my u. So my u is going to equal x squared plus 1. Now I've got to get to a du. And the only way to get to a du is I'm going to ddx this entire equation. Now when you ddx a u, you get du dx because of the chain rule. And then when you ddx x squared plus 1, you just get 2x. So this is how I'm going to get a relationship between dx and du. So now what I'm going to do is look at what I have left over. I've already got my u substitution. What do I have left over? I've got 2x dx. So I can get 2x dx by multiplying the dx to the other side. And this would be du is equal to 2x dx. So I'm going to substitute what I have. We're going to do a complete substitution. I'm going to have the integral of x squared plus 1, I said, is u. So this is going to be u to the fifth power. Notice how I have it in this form now. I've got u to some power. So I've got u to the fifth. The 2x dx is equal to du, and so I've got du here. And I've done a full substitution, and I have turned it into this form u to some power du. The du must be there. And my answer to this is going to be, we're going to add one to the exponent and divide by that. So this is going to be u to the sixth divided by six plus c. And I can now back substitute. My u was x squared plus one, so my answer is going to be x squared plus one to the sixth power over six plus c. Now you can check this if you want to. Remember with integrals, after you get an integral, check it and see if it really works. So in other words, we're going to take the derivative of our answer and see if we get back to this integrand. The integrand is the thing next to the integral sign. So if I take the derivative of this, the 6 comes down. And then of course we subtract one from the exponent. And then because of the chain rule, we multiply times the derivative of the inside. And of course the derivative of the constant is 0. The 6 over 6 becomes a 1, and there we have it. You know, and now we're, we see why that 2x was there. If that 2x was not there, I actually couldn't do this integral without expanding. So it's going to be nice that that 2x was there. Some of these integrals are going to look more difficult than they actually are because some of the other stuff, the fluff, that's just going to be part of the chain rule. So let's look at this again. Here I've got a a lot of stuff going on, but what I'm going to concentrate on is this thing in parentheses that's being raised to the fourth power. So I'm going to try to let that be my u. u equals 2x cubed plus 5. And our next step is to get the derivative of that. du dx would equal 6x squared. And this is where you want to stop and look and see what we have left over. The stuff that's outside the parentheses is an x squared and a dx. So I'm going to solve this equation for x squared dx. So the 6 is going to come over here with my du, and I'm going to get the statement that 1 sixth du is equal to x squared dx. So let's see what my substitution becomes. I'm going to have the integral of u to the fourth. The x squared dx is 1 sixth du, so I'm going to put that together as 1 sixth du. And I'm going to take advantage of a property of integrals and derivatives and limits and series and all kinds of other stuff that if you have a constant, the constant can come outside. You can never take a variable outside, but you can take a constant outside. So this is going to become 1 sixth 
integral of u to the fourth du. And I now have it into my, in my form, u to a power, and the du is there. It's got to be there. So my answer to this integral is going to be 1 sixth. But it's just going to sit there and wait on me to take my integral. So I'm going to add 1 to the 4, which becomes a 5. And then I have to divide by that and then put plus c. And I can bring these fractions together by multiplying. So this is 1 30th u to the 5th plus c. And now I can finally back substitute. My u was 2x cubed plus 5. So my answer to this is 1 30th 2x cubed plus 5 to what power? To the fifth power and then plus c. And that is my answer to that integral. Um, it even works if you've got square roots. I can rewrite this as the integral of x times x squared plus 3 to the 1 half power. So I've got something to a power. The square root means the 1 half power. So I'm going to let my u equal x squared plus 3. Next step, derivative. du dx is equal to 2x. Next step, look and see what you have extra inside the integral. We are, we've taken care of the x squared plus 3, but what we have left over is an x dx. So I'm going to solve this equation for x dx. I'll need to bring the 2 over here. So 1 half du will equal x dx. So let's substitute. I've got the integral of u to the 1 half power times 1 half du. And now I'm going to take advantage of the pulling the constant out early. I'm not going to write it like I did up here. I'm going to pull the one go ahead and pull my 1 half out here. And I'll have 1 half integral of u to the 1 half du. And now I can apply my formula. I'm going to add 1 to my exponent and divide by that. Adding 1 to 1 half is 3 halves. And dividing by 3 halves is the same thing as multiplying by 2 thirds. And don't forget your plus c. And this becomes 1 third u. And my u was x squared plus 3, so I'm going to go ahead and substitute that in. x squared plus 3. And that's being raised to the 3 halves power plus c. All right, even if the square root is on the bottom, I can rewrite this as the integral of x times 3x squared plus 4 to the negative 1 half power dx. So I just brought this whole denominator to the top and called it a negative exponent. What do you think I'm going to let my u equal? Hopefully, the, you know, this is starting to become like a movie that you've seen several times. You're going to let your u equal whatever's in the parentheses, 3x squared plus 4. Just a little process here to the reverse chain rule. du dx is our next step, and that's 6x. And the very next step, look and see what you have left over. I've got x dx, so that's what I'm going to solve this relationship, this equation for, x dx. So the 6 comes over here with the du. So 1 sixth du is equal to x dx. So with our substitution, this becomes u to the negative 1 half power times 1 sixth du. We'll go through our integration rules, add 1 to the exponent and divide by that. Adding 1 to negative 1 half is positive 1 half. Dividing by 1 half is the same thing as multiplying by 2 over 1. And so I can simplify this and substitute, and I get that my answer is 1 third times 3x squared plus 4 to the 1 half power. 3x squared plus 4 is what my u was, plus c. All right, uh, you should have on your formula chart that the integral of cosine of u du is equal to, this is on your notes from the first day, this is equal to sine of u plus c. But again, it's very important that the du is there. So here I don't have a power. I've just got a trig function. So I'm going to let my u equal the angle 3x or the argument 3x because that's what's inside the cosine. And the very next step is to do du dx, which would equal 3. And now we're going to look and see what we have left over. The only thing I have left over is just this dx. So I'm going to say that 1 third du equals dx. We multiplied both sides by dx and brought the 3 over here with the du. So this becomes 1 third 
integral of cosine of u du, the dx becomes the, the, the one-third du and the one-third comes outside, and so I now I have it in this form. And so my answer is going to be one-third sine of u, which u was 3x, and then plus c. All right, so I'm going to teach you just one extra thing. Solving a differential equation requires us to bring the dx over here. So I'm going to rewrite this problem first. I'm going to say dy is equal to 9x squared. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite that as 1 plus x cubed to the negative 1 half power plus 5x, and all of that gets multiplied times dx. Now, this first part here was going to require u substitution, but my second part does not. So I'm going to break this up into two integrals. And what we're going to do now is we're going to integrate both sides. I need to get the integral of dy. And the integral of dy is y plus c. But I'm not going to put the plus c on this left-hand side. I'm just going to put the plus c on the right-hand side with everything. Just imagine that I subtract the c to the other side and call it a different c. So my y is going to equal the integral of 9x squared times 1 plus x cubed to the negative 1 half power dx plus the integral of 5x dx. I'm going to separate this into two integrals because I do not need u substitution for this second part. But I definitely need it for this first part. My u will equal 1 plus x cubed. So my du dx is 3x squared. Now I have to look and see what I have left over. What I have left over is a 9x squared dx. How am I going to get that? I've got an x squared and I can pull the dx over, but this is just a 3. I actually want it to be a 9. So the way you turn a 3 into a 9 is you're going, you're going to multiply by 3. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 3 and bring the dx over. So this says that 3 du is equal to 9x squared dx. And now I have my substitution ready, and I'll get this in just a minute. So this becomes the integral of u to the negative one-half power. My u was 1 plus x cubed, and 9x squared dx, these two parts became a 3 du, and then plus the integral of 5x dx. So well, let's finish this. I'm running out of room. We're going to drop down below our little homework box. The integral of u to the negative one-half is u to the positive one-half, but there's a 3 there as well. Dividing by one half is the same thing as multiplying by two. And I'm not going to put the plus c yet. I'm going to go ahead and do my integral of 5x, which is 5 halves x squared. And then finally at the very end I've got this plus c. And this plus c was a combination of me bringing the plus c from the y over and also adding the plus c from this. There's no reason to write you know, you probably do in physics, but there's no reason to write c and c sub 1 and then c sub 2. It, I mean, it's messy enough. So we're just going to write one c out here. Now, if you ever change your c, we're going to change it to a c sub 1 or a c sub 2. But for now, that's just my c that's a combination of all the other c's. And I can now substitute my u was equal to, where is it, 1 plus x cubed. So I've got 6 times 1 plus x cubed to the 1 half power plus 5 halves x squared, try and fix my 5 there, plus c, and there you go. You might put your square root here if you wanted to make it look like what the calculator says, and I will see you guys tomorrow.